war over Paul Ryan's budget. Catholic protesters slamming the GOP congressman's plan outside and inside his speech at no less than Georgetown University today. Their huge sign saying, you there when they crucified the poor? So now when you try to cut, you are worse than Judas. My next guest says this is getting a little incredible and a lot nonsensical. He says, start the cutting, no matter the outcry. The GOP Texas congressman and presidential candidate, Ron Paul, with me now. Congressman, good to have you back. Thank you. Good to be with you, Neil. This is what happens, Congressman. Every time someone even decides to address entitlements, let alone, as you pointed out before, and I know you have great respect for, for Congressman Ryan, he doesn't really cut anything. He, at best, is slowing the growth, uh, in, in this case, of Medicare, and later on with his budget. But... If this is the kind of response you get doing that, where are we? Well, that shows how difficult it's going to be, but there's several problems here. Uh, first, uh, when government gets involved, and if you assume government's supposed to do all the care for the poor, you have to admit that it uses force. You remember Mother Teresa didn't, wasn't a lobbyist, and when Jesus went on earth, Jesus didn't go to Rome to get the laws changed, but this said, uh, I think there's some uh, flaws in the Republican budget. I did not support it, but I also sympathize with Paul Ryan getting so much grief over even making an attempt. But I think it's the priorities. I, I pick different priorities. I want to cut this war spending and overseas spending. And actually, even with all my drastic cuts, I want to cut a trillion dollars. I protect the poor. Uh, and it's not because I think this is the best way to do with it, but in the transition, I believe that it is better to cut overseas spending, deal with the military industrial complex. So the Republicans set themselves up. They want to cut, but then they find out they cut something that looks like they're cutting the poor and they won't touch the military budget. I think we have to listen to uh, Eisenhower and deal with the military industrial complex, work our way out of it, but not endorse the principle that it's the responsibility of the government to uh, pr to promote uh, the care for the poor, because I think that belongs to the church, not the government. But as you know, Congress, this has come up in a number of debates you've been featured in, uh, where Iran all of a sudden starts uh, saber rattling again, or, or attempting uh, what some of your colleagues say could be a world war. Um, bad timing for that kind of talk. That that is something that the government has a responsibility to address. Well, I, I think it's very misleading. That was the same argument they used for Iraq. Iraq was going to attack us. They had planned to attack Iraq since 1998 and finally found the excuse in, uh, in 2003. Uh, so that, that was just war talk and an excuse. There's nobody's going to attack us. Our defense is strong. We have more weapons than everybody else put together. So this idea that we have to do it for our safety, just talk it to the military So you think they're fear-mongering? The you, so you think they're fear-mongering a bit? Now, people can agree or disagree with that. But I, in the aggregate sense, let's say you were to address a lot of the military spending. I guess it's $600 billion or so north of, of that a year. Uh, how much would you cut it? A lot, because, you know, what, we spend, uh, two, two, well, we spend over a trillion dollars when you add everything up. You can cut hundreds of billions of dollars out. Bring, just bring the troops home. Have the troops spend all their money here at home, because we're not providing defense. We're just getting ourselves into trouble. So I would say that is more legitimate than saying, well, we're going to balance the budget on the backs of the poor right. uh, politically. Even if, it's, if, even if you looked at it purely politically, it, it doesn't make good sense. I do it philosophically, but I don't even endorse those spendings. And I do have some empathy for Paul Ryan because he is making an attempt right. and look at how much grief. I'm complaining about him because he won't cut anything. But I think it's wrong to think that you can do it attacking food stamps and medical care for the poor and not even address the subject of the military industrial complex and changing our foreign policy because we spend way too much money in that area. Right now, it's pretty much you and Mitt Romney. Uh, Newt Gingrich is all but stepped out of the race. You're sticking in right through Tampa? Well, I'm going to stick in to find out how many votes. I'm, they're just in the process of counting votes. There's hardly any primaries left, and uh, it sure looks like Mitt is uh, well ahead. But I'd like to see the votes counted. Well, could you uh, see you know, a scenario, Congressman, where you could win this? 
uh, it, I mean, theoretically, it's possible. It's not. I mean, it's not likely. But you know what? <laughs> right now, uh, it looks like we, we might win Iowa. <laughs> you know, after all these months. You know, just think if I would have won Iowa the, for, uh, the night of the straw vote. Just think of the difference it would have been in the campaign. No, that's so a good no, point. there's a possibility we're gonna we're gonna win it, and uh, Minnesota we might win, and Maine we might no, win, and maybe so. And 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 it, is, it might be water under the bridge, and now, but I mean. Uh, you're about, you know, 800 delegates behind Mitt Romney. He's a that couple of hundred away. That is true. So is it really but his? See, see I, I think it's pretty much so, but uh, yeah. we have two goals. One is to win the election, and, and the second is to maximize our delegates with the maximum number of delegates and the, and the excitement of a whole generation of individuals who say that we need to have changes. That, that is uh, a victory in itself because right mm -hmm. now that is where we're winning the hearts and minds of so many people. And that is probably long term a lot more important than who's going to uh, be the nominee here in the next two months. Well, you've got a lot of people's respect. I know that. Um, Congressman, always good seeing you. Thank you very much.